Folks, right now our world is changing in many uncomfortable ways. If it's not natural disasters, it's political or economic disasters, nobody knows what's next. The bottom line, you need to be prepared for anything to happen at a moment's notice. You won't get a warning. This isn't a movie. That's why the smartest thing you can do is invest in emergency food from preparewiththinkaboutit.com while you still can. As I speak, they're offering a deep discount on their popular three-month emergency food kit. It's actually the biggest discount they've ever offered, but it doesn't come along every day, so don't pass it up. Act now and grab your 25% discount on each three-month food kit you need. Get one kit per person in your family. You won't regret it. Again, go to preparewiththinkaboutit.com. You'll save 25% while supplies last. Go to preparewiththinkaboutit.com right now. Preparewiththinkaboutit.com. Hi, Steve here. I'm doing this video for one reason, because I hate to see people in the church, in the body of Christ, who are either uninformed or deceived. It grieves me when I hear preachers and other so-called knowledgeable people proclaim, the Lord's coming back soon. Well, He is coming back soon if you compare it to 2,000 years time, but the Word of God is clear about when He's coming. I want you to see the scriptures that prove this without a doubt that Jesus is not coming back soon or before the great persecution. In fact, the complete Jewish Bible translation doesn't use the word great tribulation, it uses the words great persecution. And I'll tell you why this is so important. It's because so many believers have put all their trust in this false teaching and when things really get rough and the persecution ramps up, these believers will doubt everything else they've ever learned about their faith. I believe they'll give up and they'll give in. It's what Jesus was talking about when he said, at that time many will be offended and repelled by their association with me and will fall away from the one whom they should trust and will betray one another, handing over believers to their persecutors and will hate one another. This is describing so-called believers betraying other believers and turning them in. Jesus started out this message to the disciples by saying, be careful that no one misleads you, deceiving you and leading you into error. Watch out, don't let anyone fool you. The Apostle Paul told the Thessalonians, I don't want you to be uninformed. He also said, don't let anyone deceive you in any way, but I'm afraid that's exactly what's happened. I explained where this false pre-tribulation rapture doctrine came from, but rather than go over that again, I'd rather give you the scriptures that prove to you there is no such thing. Is there a catching away? Yes, but it's way after the tribulation or the great persecution. I don't dispute any of the scriptures describing the catching away of those who are alive and still remain at the day of the Lord. I don't dispute the scriptures about the twinkling of an eye as being how quickly it will happen. But I want to show you the scriptures that prove the timing is not according to this false teaching. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 was the Apostle Paul reassuring saints that those who died in Christ would also be gathered together with those who were still alive at the day of the Lord, and that no one would be left behind. And he made it clear what the conversation was about, so that they would not grieve for them as the others do who have no hope beyond this present life. In other words, the lost of this world, non-believers. So the main question is, when is the day of the Lord? Now as to the times and dates, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. The Greek word here for times refers to the length of time, indicating how long one must wait for something. While the word for dates refers to the particular time that a significant event will happen. For you yourselves know perfectly well that the day of the return of the Lord is coming just as a thief comes unexpectedly and suddenly in the night. While they are saying, peace and safety, all is well and secure. Then, in a moment, unforeseen, destruction will come upon them suddenly like labor pains on a woman with child, and they will absolutely not escape, for there will be no way to escape the judgment of the Lord. 
But you believers, all of you who believe in Christ as Savior and acknowledge Him as God's Son, are not in spiritual darkness nor held by its power that the day of judgment would overtake you by surprise like a thief. For you are all sons of light and sons of day. We don't belong to the night or to darkness. So then, let us not sleep in spiritual indifference as the rest of the world does, but let us keep wide awake, alert and cautious, and let us be sober, self-controlled, calm and wise. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk get drunk at night. But since we believers belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope and confident assurance of salvation. For God has not destined us to incur his wrath. That is, he didn't select us to condemn us, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died willingly for us, so that whether we are awake, alive, or asleep, dead, at Christ's appearing, we will live together with him, sharing eternal life. So what Paul is saying is that we know everything about when the Lord will return except the exact day and hour. That's all we don't know. Jesus never said the saints wouldn't know the season or the approximate time, but what he said was, but of that exact day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven nor the Son in his humanity, but the Father alone. Verse 9 is the one that trips people up the most. They say, see, the Lord will rapture the church before the tribulation because he doesn't want us to experience his wrath. Of course he doesn't. But let me point out to you, if you read the word of God in Revelation, the wrath of God or fury of God doesn't even begin until chapter 16 of Revelation. Before that comes the great persecution called the great tribulation. And after that comes the judgment of God, then the wrath of God. It's in the book of 2 Thessalonians where the Apostle Paul makes clear, don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for the day will not come until after the apostasy has come and the man who separates himself from Torah has been revealed, the one destined for doom. The Amplified Bible translation says, that day will not come unless the apostasy comes first. That is the great rebellion, the abandonment of the faith by professed Christians and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, the Antichrist. He makes it clear here that these two things are going to happen before the day of the Lord. Let's connect the dots with what Jesus said, to what Paul said, to what John said in Revelation. Jesus said, be careful that no one misleads you, deceiving you and leading you into error. For many will come in my name, misusing it and appropriating the strength of the name which belongs to me, saying, I am the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed, and they will mislead many. You will continually hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not frightened, for those things must take place, but that is not yet the end of the age. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in different places. But all these things are merely the beginning of birth pangs, of the intolerable anguish and the time of unprecedented trouble. Then they will hand you over to endure tribulation and will put you to death and you will be hated of all nations because of my name. At that time, many will be offended and repelled by their association with me and will fall away from the one whom they should trust and will betray one another, handing over believers to their persecutors and will hate one another. Many false prophets will appear and mislead many. Because lawlessness is increased, the love of most people will grow cold. But the one who endures and bears up under suffering to the end will be saved. This good news of the kingdom, the gospel, will be preached throughout the whole world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end of the age will come. Verses 4 through 12 of what Jesus said here are an exact parallel match of what's happening in Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. The first five seals describe perfectly what Jesus said in these verses in Matthew chapter 24. And if you stayed and watched this video to this point, I'm going to give you my personal belief about when the fulfillment of what the Apostle Paul told the Thessalonians will happen. While they are saying, peace and safety, all is well and secure, then, in a moment, unforeseen destruction will come upon them suddenly, like labor pains on a woman with child, and they will absolutely not escape, for there will be no way to escape the judgment of the Lord. I see this happening at the end of the fifth seal being opened. 
After many Christians have been martyred, murdered, and strongly persecuted, the world will say, finally, we've got peace and safety. Everyone in the world is complying with the new world order, and we're getting rid of these horrible Christians who refuse to go along with our system. Then the final seal will be opened. Read the Bible. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, your Lord, I leave a link in the description box below that will help lead you in a simple prayer to ask Jesus to be the Lord of your life. Think about it.